All right, so in this video, we're going to wrap up our discussion of motors and how they work uh, with some really good detail about actual motors, uh, DC motors. We're going to talk about DC direct current motors, where, uh, which means the current from the power supply is always going the same direction around the circuit. That's different from an AC motor, which would operate based on alternating current, which switches its direction in the circuit. In any case, uh, DC motors tend to be a little bit more versatile in what you can do with them. So usually most motors are DC motors, especially in like power tools or, you know, kids toys or things like that. So, all right. And oftentimes those motors will look almost just like this one, uh, except inside. This is actually, don't be fooled, this motor is actually much larger than this one, even though they look the same size in these pictures. This would be a very big heavy duty motor, and this one's a little one like you might find it in a, little, in a toy or whatever. So, all right, let's see what's inside those casings, shall we? All right, in diagram form, here is uh, an image that looks probably a little bit familiar um, from previous slides, but it's got more detail. Uh, here we have our two permanent magnets, though they might be electromagnets. But these are providing our elect, um, the magnetic field in which our wire coil sits. Um, in order for a motor to actually work, you have to have an axle through the middle of all this, and this thing is then going to be um, hooked up to whatever it is that you're trying to rotate with the, uh, with the motion of the coil. right? So this end would stick out from the housing of the motor. It's that little nub. If you remember from the previous slide, that little thing was sticking out. We'll see um, another real motor in parts on the next slide, so I'll point out the axle on that as well. Um, so here we have our coil, which is inside the magnetic field. The coil starts here and goes around, and then it ends here. Um, this green thing is called a split ring commutator. Let's zoom in on that, because that's the real business part of the thing that makes a DC motor actually work. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this functions in the next couple of slides. But what it is, is a, it's a circular conductor um, that's been split in the middle. So there's non-conductive material here in between these two. And then this is a conductive ring, and this is a conductive ring. Usually these things are just mounted on like a piece of plastic. So the plastic is in between here. So these two ends are do not touch. So they don't conduct between these two parts here and here. Um, the axle would come through the middle of the commutator. And then one end of the coil is hooked to one side of the commutator, and the other end of the coil is hooked to the other side. Now the commutator itself is hooked up to what are called brushes. These brushes are conductive as well. Uh, they might be made out of metal fibers woven together, or they might just be a springy piece of metal that holds itself uh, tightly up against the commutator um, on each side. And then those brushes are what's connected into the actual circuit. Um, and then in the circuit, of course, you have to have a power supply that's providing the electrical current. So in this case, the power supply has a plus side over here, like so. And then conventional current would go out this way along here. And then up that way, back down here after it goes through the wire, and back. So that's what the current would do in this part of the circuit. The interesting thing is what the current would be doing in the rest of the circuit. All right. So at this moment in time, if we consider this, consider this a freeze frame of the functioning of the motor, current is coming from the power supply through this brush into this commutator, and then through the coil of wire this way, around like that. So current is going this way on this side, and it's coming back this way on this side of the loop. All right, and of course, it goes around and around and around. So that means if we use our left-hand rule at the present moment, um, point your finger from north to south, like this, first finger. Um, current is going into the screen. So your middle finger, your second finger should point inwards, and that should leave your thumb pointed up. So right now, this coil is going upwards on this side and downwards on this side. Should be, if I did that right. So up, down. Now here's the thing. If the commutator was not here, 
this side would just go up, 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 up. It's still experiencing an upward force, up, up, it's just up. So it gets to the top and it's still experiencing an upward force, so it would stop. Same thing here, this one's going down and it's still experiencing a downward force, so it still goes down. So if the current keeps going like this, if this were a solid ring, and the, keep just, the current just kept going around like that, you'd, you'd get a half turn out of this thing and then it would stop vertically. With this side at the top experiencing an upward force and this side at the bottom experiencing a downward force, and that would be it. End of story. No motor. It would stop spinning. That's not very useful. So what happens is with the commutator, you'll notice right now this half of the loop is hooked up to the plus end and this half of the loop is hooked up to the minus end. But if you were to spin this, and I'll show you a slide later that, that makes it a little bit more clear. You have to picture this. Imagine that this thing spins, and this thing spins, and just as it gets to vertical, the commutator is going to switch over. So this side of the loop will rotate around, and just at the moment when the loop is vertical, it's going to switch. So the com this side of the commutator will now be over here, and this side will now be over here. So this loop, which has been experiencing an upward force, just as it gets to the top, it's going to switch so that its side is now hooked up over here, and that means that this side of the loop gets to the top, it's experiencing an upward force all the way up, and then when it gets to the top, it starts experiencing a downward force, and that's going to keep it rotating. So every half turn, when it gets to the bottom, same thing, it switches. Current switches direction, which means that the force flips direction. So just as it gets to the top, it switches to a downward force, the downward force takes it to the bottom, and then it switches right at the bottom, to an upward force. And then it switches again to a downward force. Upward force, downward force, upward force, downward force. Because every half turn, its half of the commutator switches sides. So the current switches direction. And that causes the force to flip. So every half turn, um, this half of the loop, every 180 degrees, the direction of the force flips. So that's what keeps it spinning. Same thing on this half. All right. Sorry, that was really complicated and long. Um, let's wrap this up as quickly as possible. I realize that that took some time on that slide, but it's really it's a it's a tricky concept, and I was trying to make it as clear as possible. So let's just, uh, let's look at an actual motor again. Um, so here's the casing. All the all the coils and everything are inside there, and this is the axle that goes through the loops of wire and also through the commutator, and this is what you would hook something up to maybe some gears or whatever um, in order to operate whatever it is you're trying to operate. So that's the part that does the spinning and that's what you can use to do stuff. Um, this is the inside of the motor. Right here is your coils of wire that are going to be rotating. Here's your magnets inside. Those are permanent magnets inside the casing there and you can see they're rounded and they're basically attached to the casing. Um, here is your commutator. It's a little hard to see but that's the commutator. Um, that's the axle that would stick out the bottom of this casing. And then right in here, there's a, better, there's a better view of it on a different part, but this is your brushes. One brush here, one brush there. Um, let's move down here, see what we got there. All right, this has a better view of the commutator. Uh, you can see that there's three coils of wire, so there's actually three parts to the commutator on this one instead of just two. Um, this is a more functional motor. Uh, basically, the current would switch direction three times instead of two times as this one goes around. Um, and that makes it even more efficient and even better at rotating in the field. And then the last thing, here's a really good look at the brushes. So the commutator here, actually let's just zoom it out so you can see both at the same time. The commutator here would sit down inside this part and those brushes would be touching against the parts of the commutator there. So that's a view of an actual real motor um, and its internal parts. And then here's one last diagram to take a look at um, how the rotation might actually occur in, uh, in a motor. So here you've got the commutator has just switched because the rotation is this direction. We're not going to use our left hand roll to try to figure this one out because it's complicated. So we'll just take their word for it. The, the motor is spinning this way, like this. So this has just switched. 
this end has just, this half of the commutator has just become negative and this other half has just become positive. So this thing's gonna rotate around and here it is at its maximum force because this loop is horizontal so it's experiencing the maximum force, the maximum torque. And you can see these are right in the middle of the commutator halves. Um, so this is gonna spin around. It's, you know, currently it's experiencing a force in this direction. That means I guess uh, this side is experiencing an upward force and this side is experiencing a downward force. So that's how that would work. And then you get around to here. And just as we get to a vertical position of this, then we're gonna switch. See, we're just about to switch over to the other side of the commutator and that will keep the, mo keep the motion going. All right, so this side would then be the one that's going to keep getting pushed this way, and this side would be the one that would get pushed that way. All right, um, I realize this is complicated, and I will talk about it more in class, and you can feel free to ask questions and try to get more understanding then. Um, but that's basically it for a DC motor. Uh, those are the main ideas. If you can really grasp those things, you'll, get, you'll understand what's going on here, and you should be just fine. So thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful, and we'll catch you in the next one.